Hey guys, Sebastian from Madrigal here. I'm making Traction Point, a game which I'm developing using my own game engine and tools. Now in this video we're not going to talk very much about that game in particular. I invite you to check out the videos on the channel. There's some live streams as well, if you want to know more. But in this video we're going to answer a question that I get quite often in my comment sections. And that is how do all of the different pieces of the game project fit together? Because the game is written in ZIG, the ZIG programming language, while the core engine is C++. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know that there's a fair bit of C Sharp in there as well. So the question is, how do I make all of these things talk to each other? How do I make, make them fit together into a cohesive whole? Now this video is mostly meant as a reference to anyone watching my videos and wondering how the system works, but I hope that this can stand on its own and be interesting if you're interested in these things. And it's worth pointing out that this is not necessarily my idea of the perfect game engine architecture, if there even is such a thing. This is just how my game engine has organically evolved over time. Alright, so first of all, let's split the system into three rough parts. We have the runtime here on the left, that's everything related to the running game. On the right we have the tools, that's everything related to making the game. And in the middle we have the core. Now these are rough splits, there's some overlap between these. But the idea of this split is to give you a rough idea of what goes where. So smack in the middle we have basis.dll. This is the core engine library. On the Mac it would be Dilib, on the Linux platforms it would be SO, but we're using DLL here because uh, Windows is the main platform anyway. Now it's written in C++ and it provides just a whole bunch of things. I've listed some of it here. So we have memory management, serialization, threading, input. The game object model is hosted here. The scripting, so angel script is found here. The high-level renderer refers to the system that concerns itself with uh, meshes, materials, the scene hierarchy, post-processing effects, shadow mapping, stuff like that. Messaging can be found in the core engine library. And then we have APIs for plugins. That's something that I'm, I'll go into detail about later. Now, if you're making a game and you're making it with C++, so this was the original sort of idea for making a game with bases. You would have your own project for the game.exe file. Now this is the project that hosts the main loop for the game. So there's no main loop in the core engine library. And of course you have your game specific code here. So game specific systems, game components, all of that stuff. The game.exe project then links to the bases DLL library and uses that to do essentially all of this and much more. But then maybe you'll want to use something like PhysX to simulate physics, which we very much do in Traction Point. Or you'll want to use D3D11 to do rendering, or WebGPU even. These are all plugins, and this is where we get to this APIs for plugins. So the core engine library only contains an API for doing physics simulation or an API for doing graphics rendering. And then we need to pair it with a plugin, which is the actual implementation. Now it's the game EXE that actually loads these things because the game can determine if it wants to use PhysX or Bullet, for example, or if it wants to use D3D11 or WebGPU. But these are the plugins up here that implement whatever we have APIs for in the core engine library. Now if you've seen my videos on Traction Point, you've seen trampoline.exe pop up every now and then. And that is the name of the game, confusingly. This is also written in C++ and it is essentially a launcher for ZIG-based games in Basis. So again it is the project or or library, if you will, which contains the main loop and it loads the SIG game library. And it also loads and exposes some functionality to SIG that's found in C and C++. Again, the trampoline loads the core engine library and it loads the plugins. So you have either the actual game EXE or you have the trampoline EXE, which can be used with many different SIG games. Because it loads the SIG game library. 
so gamelib.dll. In the case of traction point, it's called means game.dll, but the idea is the same. And this is the library now, which is written in Zig, and it contains the game specific code. And this is where you'll be spending most of your time if you're actually using this to build a game. And uh, it's also the place where we've spent most of our time in the videos for Traction Point. So the trampoline exe loads that, and it might also load other things, because you might want to use Tambor to play back audio. Nemo to do mission scripting or Goofy to do UI. These are all C++ libraries. And because they're C++ libraries, gamelib.dll, which is in Zig, can't directly load them, so they're actually loaded from the trampoline exe, which then exposes them to Zig via a C API. But these are statically linked, so they're linked into the trampoline.exe. Then we go to the tools side, which is mostly C sharp based. There's some C++ in here as well. First of all, we have the basis tools lib.dll. This is kind of like a cut down version of the core basis DLL library. So it provides things like serialization, which is compatible with whatever this core engine library here on the native side produces and consumes. So for example, if you have a struct in C sharp, you can serialize it with in, in such a way that the native side can then consume that and deserialize it, and uh, vice versa. Then we have a bunch of tools. Basis editor the DXE. This is the level editor. This actually runs the engine via the game EXE. That would be either this game EXE here or trampoline the DXE here to do rendering and editing. So now we have actually all three sides working together to uh, make something happen, happen on the screen. We have other tools such as uh, Basis Asset Server, which serves the resources to the running game over the network. And it also watches the file system and uh, runs the converters as assets are modified. Converters can be written in uh, C++, so these are typically or always basically command line tools. So something comes in, some other thing com goes out. And the Shady Compiler is a C++ converter, so it actually links to the core engine DLL. We might have another tool here. The Texture Converter is a C Sharp tool, so it actually links to the C Sharp version of the core engine library. And we have more converters. These are just some examples. Both the shader compiler and the texture converter exe are actually just front ends for other tools that they then run to do the actual work. And this is basically the whole architecture and all of the pieces. We don't list all of the tools and libraries here. For example, we don't list all of the converters. We also don't list the node based uh, editors that we've been messing around with lately. They would all go here on the, on the tools side. Basically, every single C sharp based tool links to the basis tools lib.dll. But they work basically the same. Some of them also run the trampoline or game exe, just like the editor, such as the asset browser runs the game for asset previews. Other things run the basis DLL, such as the timbre editor for playing back audio, but essentially everything is the same. You can drop a uh, program in the basis ecosystem, typically into the runtime or the tools side, and then they refer to the core, usually, in one way or another. So, I'm hoping this gives you a better view of how this system is actually built. And now you have a better understanding of where we are working when we're making modifications to one of these things.